In this video, we're going over how to use the TCL 20 XE for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. And in the video today, I'm gonna to be walking you through how to use the TCL 20 XE for beginners. This will be a full beginners walkthrough. And here are the topics I'll be covering in the video. We're gonna start with a walkthrough of how to navigate the phone, how to move around, how to use the buttons. We'll look at the exterior buttons, the buttons on the touch screen. From there, we will move on to how to make phone calls and how to answer the phone. Then we'll move on to how to make the font size bigger to make it easier to read things on your screen. After that, we'll move into volume controls, how to put the phone on silent and vibrate. Then we'll walk through what is called the navigation panel, which is where you'll receive all your incoming messages. So how to navigate that. Then we'll go into how to send text messages. We'll walk through how to sign into emails and check emails. And then we will end with how to take pictures. So that's what you can expect from the video. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's start with taking our tour of the phone so you can see where all the buttons are, how to unlock the phone, and just those basic things to start. So, on the left side of the phone, you'll notice there are no buttons. There is just a SIM card tray where you can put in the SIM card for the service and also a micro SD card to expand the storage. On the right side of the phone, you'll find your volume up, volume down, and your power sleep button. Now the way this button works is pressing it when the phone is on will wake up the phone. And when I say on, I mean it's powered on. So just for example, the phone is powered on right now. So if I press that button once, it will wake up the phone. If I press it again, the phone will go, go to sleep. Now guess what? The phone is still powered on, but it's in the sleep mode. Pressing this once will wake up the phone. Now if I hold down on this button, it will bring up the menu to now be able to power off the phone, restart the phone, or put it in the airplane mode. So that's one important thing to note. You should never have to actually turn your phone off. On this phone, um, you'll simply, when you're finished using it, you can just tap the power button, put the phone to sleep, and just wake it up when it's time for you to use it again. All right, so that's how the power button works. I'm gonna tap that button once to wake up the phone. And I'm gonna put my finger on the screen and just drag it up. And that's how you unlock the phone. You're simply dragging your, your finger across the screen and that takes you into the phone. Now, I wanna show you a few more things really quick here. At the top of the phone, you will find the auxiliary headphone jack to plug in your headphones. And then at the bottom of the phone, you will find your type C charging port. So just FYI, this phone uses a type C charging cable. So if you ever needed to replace the charger, you would ask for a type C USB type C charging cable. Okay, so that's our quick tour of the outside. Now we're gonna unlock that phone. Let's do it one more time. Take your finger, put it on the screen, drag it up. That takes you into the phone. And next we're gonna go over how to navigate the home screen. So you'll find three buttons at the bottom of the screen, your recent apps, home button, and the back button. These are probably the three most important buttons on the phone because they help you to just navigate the whole system. Now let's start with the center button, which is the home button. Now if I tap on one of these little icons, which are, they're called apps. Apps is short for application. Um, think of it like a computer. Computers have programs, phones have apps or applications. When you tap on one of these apps, it will take you into you know, their system. I just tapped on Chrome, so now I'm on the internet and I can begin searching the web for anything and everything. Now, if I wanna get back to my home screen, I'm gonna tap on the circle at the bottom of the screen, the home button, and that will take me back to the home screen. So no matter what you're doing, if you wanna get back to this screen, which is the home screen, you always tap the home button that always takes you back to this screen. Now next to the right, we have the, what is called back button. This will take you back one step. 
So as an example, I'm gonna to go to the settings application right here. And I'm going to swipe up and just select uh, one menu option to look further into. I'm gonna tap on the sound and vibration. Now guess what? I tapped on sound and vibration. I'm now in that section of the phone. If I'd like to get out of this section, I can simply tap my back button one time and it'll take me back one page. That's how the back button works. It just takes you back one step. Now guess what? Now I'm back on the main screen of the settings application. If I hit the back button again, guess what? It's gonna take me out of the settings now because that's as far back as we can go. So this button simply just helps you go back one step. That's the main purpose of it. And if you tap the button too many times, it'll take you back to your home screen. Now on the left here, you'll find the recent apps button. Tapping this will show you all of the applications that are currently running on the phone. So we just opened up settings and here it is. We can go right back to it if we wanted to by just tapping just like that. Now, recent apps again, I can swipe over. We also went to Google Chrome, so guess what? Our page is still open, and a few other apps we used uh, earlier. So, one thing to understand is that when you go into one of these little apps or applications, and then you tap the home button, those apps are still open. If I tap on the contacts, guess what? I'm in the contacts, I'm now gonna tap the home button to get back to the home screen, but guess what? The contacts application is still open, so if I tap on the recent apps button, I can simply go back to it later if I'd like to continue looking at what I was using, or I can just swipe up and that will close these applications. So now they're no longer running in the background of the phone. So if you wanna close an app, you have to swipe it up to actually close it. So those are the three main buttons you'll be using to navigate the phone. Now, next I wanna show you just one more quick thing, which is swiping up on the home screen takes you to what's called your app drawer. And this is where you'll find all the applications that are on your phone. And you'll find a lot are pre-installed. They're gonna be there as soon as you turn your phone on. And if you download new applications, they'll also show up in this section. Now guess what, we're not gonna go over downloading apps in this section, but stay tuned, we have a section later on in the video where we'll go over how to download applications and how to look for new applications. So stay tuned for that. Let's hit our home button. Next, I'm gonna go over how to make the font size larger so it will be easier for you to read text on the screen. So we're gonna tap on the settings wheel and we're gonna swipe up until we get to display. From display, look for the option that says font size. And I'm gonna drag this little bar over by putting my finger on the little bubble and dragging it to the right and you'll notice the text up here is gonna get larger. So over one, over two, and now the text is a bit larger and easier for me to read. So that's how you make the text larger to make it easier for you to read different things on your screen. You'll notice now the menus are larger as well so I can read the options better. So all that just came from changing the font size. And notice I'm using the back button right now to take one step out of that setting. And now I'm gonna hit the home button to go back to my main screen. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how to change the sound settings. So for example, if you go into somewhere where you need to be quiet, you can put your phone on vibrate or silent. It's really easy to do. You're simply gonna tap on the volume up or volume down on the right side of the phone, volume up or down, tap, will bring up this menu. I can tap on, so one important note is this menu goes away very fast. It only stays for about two seconds. So I will have to press it multiple times to be able to show you how to use it properly. So just, I wanna prepare you for that. So tap volume up. Now I can drag this little bar 
up if I want the phone to ring louder or I can drag it to the left for it to ring softer. There's a bell right next to it on the left. Tapping that bell will change the phone setting from the ringer being on to vibrate. So watch this. Tap the bell. Now the phone is on vibrate and tap it again. Now there's a slash over the bell. That means the sound is totally off. It won't vibrate, it won't ring. It'll be totally silent. Let's tap it again, okay? And as you tap it once, now the ringer is up and the bell has no slash. So that's how you control the sound, simply changing this bell to the different options. So vibrate, no sound, ringer up. You should always check that if you notice people are calling but you're not hearing the phone ring. It could be an issue with the sound settings. Now one last thing, to the right there's an arrow you can tap and this brings up a larger menu that will allow you to control the sound in other sections of the phone. So for example, I can control the media volume which is the volume of videos or music. So if you're trying to play music, you wanna bring up the media volume. If you wanna change your alarm volume so your phone will make a louder noise when there's an alarm, you bring this one up. And for notifications, if you want the phone to, to make a louder noise when someone sends you a text message or an email, drag this one up. So these are the four different volume options you have on the phone. Okay, so we've gone over making the font larger. We've gone over changing the sound settings. So next, we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you how to answer a phone call and how to make a phone call. So I'm gonna start with initiating a call so you can see what it looks like and I'll show you how to answer the phone. So let's initiate a call and then we can go from there. So we should see the phone ring in a bit and that's loud there we go so it's a pop-up at the top of the screen I'm gonna tap on the green button and that will answer the phone and guess what my call is answered and now I can begin to talk if I tap this button it'll put the phone on speaker If I tap it again it'll be off speaker and when I'm all done and ready to end the call I'm gonna tap on the red button and that will end the call. So that's the easiest thing you need to do. Someone calls, tap that green button to answer the phone, tap the red button if you want to decline the call, which means don't answer. Now this is if you're actively using the phone when someone calls you, but if the phone is off and someone tries to call you, it's gonna show up differently on the screen and you'll need to respond differently to it. So now we're gonna go over that. I'm gonna initiate that call again, and you can see what it's gonna look like on the screen. Turn that down. There's our call. Now guess what? If I tap the button, it's not gonna answer the phone. I actually need to put my finger on the white bubble and drag it up like this. And that's how you answer the phone if someone is calling you and you weren't using the phone. Notice it looks different. The reason it looks different is because if the phone is off, there's a good chance that phone is in your pocket. And you don't want it to just answer by accident by tapping your pocket. That's why you have to swipe up. Now I'm gonna initiate the call one more time and this time I'm going to not answer the call. Take your finger, put it on the bubble and we're gonna drag down to reject the call, just like this. So on the bubble, swipe down. It's quick. Swiping down declines the call so that it doesn't answer. So those are the things you'll need to know about answering the phone if the phone is on versus off. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how do you make your own call if you're trying to reach out to someone? Tap on the green button in the bottom left corner. Make sure you're on the home screen. Tap on this keypad button here. It'll bring up all of the numbers. And from here, I can enter my phone number. 
There we go. So enter your area code, phone number, tap the green button to start the call. And there it is. The call is in. And now you can lift the phone, put it to your ear and say hello. Or you can tap on this button to put the phone on speaker. When you're all done and you're ready to hang up, tap the red button and you're done. So that's the process to make a call and the process to answer the phone. In the next section, we're gonna go over another important menu you'll need to know about in navigating your new phone, which is called the notification panel. By taking your, taking your finger, putting it at the top of the screen and just swiping down or dragging down this will bring up what is called your notification panel. And in the notification panel, you will receive different messages from the different applications you have installed on your phone. For example, if you're signed into your email, you'll see the email show up in this section. If someone sends you a text message, it'll show up in this section. And you'll just be able to tap on it in order to start the call or excuse me, you'll be able to tap on the email in order to go to it and read the email. So right now, as I'm going through here, I have some text messages. I have a YouTube video because I watch YouTube on the phone, so it'll send me recommendations. And normally you would see a text message as well. Now, at the top of the screen, if I swipe down a second time, it'll actually bring up another menu. Oh, let's try it again. There we go, okay. Let's try that one more time, just so you'll understand how this is supposed to look. We're swiping down one time. We have these menu options at the top here. We have our Wi-Fi, our connection, flashlight, Bluetooth, our phone rotation, and we have our brightness meter. If you want to raise the brightness of your screen, you can simply drag this right or left to make the phone brighter or darker. And with these switches, these are basically shortcuts to the most used uh, settings that you would need. So for example, if you wanna connect your phone to Wi-Fi, you would wanna tap on the Wi-Fi icon to first turn on the Wi-Fi. And then you could take your finger, hold down on the icon for about one second. It's gonna take you to the Wi-Fi menu where you can then um, look for the network you're trying to connect to. Let's say your home Wi-Fi was blessed. You would tap on blessed and then you would have to enter the password right here. Okay, that's how you would connect to Wi-Fi. Now swipe down. If you wanted to connect to a Bluetooth speaker, you would need to turn on Bluetooth first here. So guess what, Bluetooth is on and I can then hold down on the icon to take me right to the Bluetooth menu to begin looking for new devices trying to pair. Now, one more important thing. If I swipe down, I'm gonna see those first five options, but I can swipe a second time to bring up even more options. So my sound option, airplane mode, Wi-Fi calling, do not disturb, location, you have all kind of good options here. And if I swipe to the left like this, guess what? I have a shortcut to my hotspot, my screen recorder, one-handed mode. You have all these other shortcuts to really important menu options in the settings. So that is the notification panel. That's what's gonna keep you alerted when new messages come through and give you shortcuts to these important settings menu so you can make changes on the phone easily. In this next section, we're gonna go over how to download applications. Now, I showed you earlier in the video by swiping up, it does take you to your app drawer where you'll find all the apps on the phone. But what if there's another application you don't see that you want to download on your phone? Well, first, you'll need to tap on the Play Store icon, which is this little white circle that has a little play button in the middle. Tap on that. 
this will take you to the Google Play Store. And this is where you can download games, applications, books, and movies. You have a lot of different options that run through this app. And you'll notice on the home screen, you'll see suggestions of certain apps. Now, normally I, I only come to this app if there's something specific I already know I want to download. And for you, it could be, hey, I want to download a good Sudoku game or a solitaire game or a slot machine game. You're in the right place. You're going to go to the top of the screen, tap where it says search. Now you can type in the message manually by typing in solitaire. And as you start typing, it will begin to recommend applications with recommending solitaire. I can tap here and it will then do a full search for me of all the different solitaire applications. Now, let's say I really love this solitaire right here. I'm going to tap on it and tap install. And that fast, the app is downloading on the phone. So depending on where you live and the Wi-Fi speeds, this could go really fast or it could take a while. So just keep in mind that it varies depending on where you live. I'm going to tap on the play button. This will take me out of the store and now into this new solitaire game. So now I can begin testing my luck to see if I still got it. Let's see if I still got it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just kidding. Okay. So that's how you download an application. I'm going to tap my home button to get back to the home screen. And if I swipe up now, I should see solitaire in this menu. And there it is. There's the new application that just downloaded. It's now saved in the phone. So that's how easy it is to download an application. One more important thing I wanted to show you is sometimes you'll want to type out the specific game or thing you're trying to search for, but sometimes you just want to say it. And you can do that by tapping on the microphone in the upper right corner, and then you can say the app you'd like to download. So watch this. ABC Kids. So I can tap the microphone, I can have it search, and I don't have to type in the words each time. And now I can go through and look at all the apps that fall into ABC Kids. It looks like it's right here. I can download it by simply tapping that green install button. Now one important thing I want to note is not every application will have a green install button. Some will have a green button that has a price inside of it. The reason for that is some applications are not free. Some do require payment. And so if you see a dollar amount in the green button, it means you'll need to pay for it. So make sure you confirm that's what you want because they only give you 10 minutes to uninstall it and get a refund. So you need to know quickly, is this the right one or not? Okay. Now we're going to go back to the home screen and that is the process to download applications. In the next section, we're going to go over how to send text messages. So in the bottom left corner of the screen, there's a blue button between the phone and the contacts. Tap on the blue button there. This will take you to what is called Google messages. Press OK. We're going to make this our default. Okay. Set as default. Okay. Now I can begin sending a message to someone. So I'm going to tap on start chat. And let's say I want to send a message to someone. I can hit the number icon in the, in the corner here to start typing a number, or I can tap on the keypad right here. I can enter the phone number of the person I'm searching for. So let's type in the number. And now I'm going to hit the check. And so guess what? It found the person I was searching for and it automatically added their phone number and the contact information at the top. Now I'm just going to tap in the text message box and I can begin typing my message. Good morning. Let's try it again. And then hit the arrow here to send it off. 
and we've successfully sent a text message. Now what if you have pictures on the phone and you would like to send some pictures along with the text message? Great question. You'll tap on the second button you'll see here, one, two. We tap on button two. We can actually look through our photo gallery to see all the pictures we've taken on the phone. And I can tap on this picture and hit the arrow now to send that picture along as a text message. So that's how you send an actual message and then how you text a picture. When you're all done, you're gonna tap on the home button to take you out of messages and back to the main screen. Now, to tap it one more time, we're gonna go back. Here's our new message. And it looks like everything's saved and now we're just waiting for a response. Okay, so back button and then our home button. And that's it. That's how you send a text message. Now, if someone sent you a message, you will get a pop-up in this menu up here, and you might see a red number at the top of your text messages. That's usually a sign that someone is working, uh, someone has sent you a text message, and you can open the app to see, oh, do I have a new message? Notice messages that are in light white are new messages, and messages in gray are old messages. So make sure you're looking accordingly to decide what is new and what is not new. When you're all done, tap on the home button, and that's it. Now the next section, I wanna go over how to set up your email on the phone so that you can receive any of your old messages and stay up to date with all your new messages. So. There's a really easy way to do this. I'm gonna show you that first, and then I'm gonna show you the workaround if that doesn't work for you. So on the home screen here, you'll have a folder that says Google. Tap on the folder and come up to Gmail. Tap on Gmail. If you didn't have the, the Gmail app on your, on your main screen, don't worry. You would simply swipe up, go to Gmail in the app drawer, and it'll take you to the same place. So don't worry, that's how easy it is to get to your Gmail. Now the next question is, how do we sign in? Looks like someone else's emails are on my phone. What you're gonna do, in the upper right corner, tap on this little circle, it has an A in it right now, and go down to add another account. And here you can select from one of these options. So for example, you can add another Gmail account. You can add an Outlook, Hotmail, or Live email, a Yahoo, or an Exchange, or Office 360 account. So you'll need to select the right option that best fits your email. Now guess what? If you have an AOL email address and that's not on here, you'll need to follow the workaround in order to be able to um, sign into your AOL email. So. Really quickly before I move on to that, I just wanna show you if you had a Yahoo, tap on Yahoo, and simply it's gonna ask you to put in your email address and your password. That's it, and then it will sign you into your email so you can begin to check them on your phone. If I tap the home button here, next I'm gonna show you how to do that workaround. So for example, if you have an AOL email, an sbcglobal.net, or some other very specific email type that is not working with what I've shown you so far, no problem. This workaround should help you. Tap on the Play Store icon, come to the top. Let's erase what we had there before. And now we're gonna do a search for this. So if I have an AOL, I'm gonna tap the number button in the bottom left corner, tap the at symbol, Go back to letters and type in AOL.com and then hit the search in the bottom right corner. Guess what? AOL uh, makes a their own app that allows you to sign in and keep track of your emails. So in their case, it's easy. We simply install the AOL News app and then after a few minutes, we'll be able to sign in with her email address and password and then she'll have access. Now. I'm gonna hit the back button 
and do that same search again, AOL.com. And you'll notice other email sites are gonna come up because these are all gonna be compatible with your AOL. So you don't have to download the first one you see, which in this case I did, I downloaded the AOL app. Um, you might say, I don't want the AOL app, I just want it to be on something else. Pick one of these options and then you can install it, open it and begin setting up your email so you can check it on the phone. So that's the workaround, it's just searching the app, um, whatever it is, .com, and then it'll show you what apps will support that email type. And that's it. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to take pictures and how to make some basic So on this phone, you'll notice the screen, here is the camera. Tap that to open up the camera and take a picture. I'm gonna point the phone this way and tap the camera button at the bottom to snap the picture. And if I want to flip the camera and basically have it show from the front facing camera, I'm gonna tap this button here, which is the rotate camera button. And now you'll notice it's using the front camera and showing me everything that's on top of the phone. Tap that again to go back. Now, if I swipe to the left here, you should be able to see the different modes are changing. So I'm on auto, if I go over one, now I'm on video and it's gonna begin recording the video of whatever I'm showing. And there's a few other options, portrait and panorama. You can also zoom in by tapping on this little zoom dot on the right here and dragging it up. That will help you to zoom in much closer on an object. And this zooms pretty far. Okay. Now, after you take a picture, oh sorry, let me show you this real quick. To switch to a video, tap on video, your button is gonna turn red, and then you tap the button to begin recording. Hit the button in the middle to stop, and guess what, we just recorded a video. Now, the big question is, where do I go to see what I recorded? You can either tap on the bubble to the left of the main camera button, which is here. And this will allow you to swipe through and see some of the pictures you just took. Home button. You can also swipe up and go to your gallery, which is right here. And here you'll see all the pictures we just took are saved in our gallery section. So there you go. And that's how you take pictures and how you go back and look at them after you've taken them. All right guys, we're gonna wrap up our video here. I hope this was helpful. Our goal in making these videos is to simplify the phone, make it easy for anyone to use it out of the box. And I hope this video has aided you in your journey of learning a smartphone and being more efficient with using it. Do me a favor, hit the like button if the video was helpful. Subscribe and also leave me a comment and let me know what was your favorite tip that I shared in this video. Your feedback helps us to continue to make amazing content, so please take a few minutes, leave a comment, we truly appreciate you. Thanks again for watching, take care, and as always, have a good one.